a few other videos recently, I've been talking a lot about anxiety and the ideas of kind of what, what is purposeful and useful anxiety before we have um, sort of sporting composite, competition or training. And within this particular video, I want to talk about the concept of actually um, measuring anxiety. How can we actually go about judging, perhaps even objectively, how anxious an athlete or a group of athletes might be um, sort of feeling. And the first thing to remember is that we have different forms of anxiety. First of all, we have kind of the physiological aspects of anxiety. And of course, we call these somatic anxiety experiences. You know, the idea that you might get tense or you might get hot or you, you know, might get sort of butterflies in the, in the tummy, for example. Well, because of that, we have sort of um, somatic anxiety measurement tools as well. And one of the really simple ones is we can measure heart rate. We can actually check whether someone's heart rate has shot up because of the effects of adrenaline on the sinoatrial node, for example, or we can indeed measure skin temperature, which gives an indication as to whether the performer is warming up and getting that kind of tense feeling. And the other thing is, we can even go about measuring something like sweating rate, sweating rate. So there are certain physical measures that would allow us an insight into how anxious an athlete or a group of athletes were performing. But some of these are kind of fairly straightforward set of something like a heart rate, skin temperature and sweating might be kind of less typical. So if we're a coach, for example, what we might just do is notice people and whether they're kind of agitated or fidgety, we might just notice. And that's what we call observation. So things that we might be trying to judge is, is someone showing signs of agitation? We often see it, for example, in facial expressions. And it might just be that we notice it and then we have that sort of what would, I guess, hope to be that calming influence, that quiet word, that well-placed moment of kind of good advice and clarity. And assuming we do that well, and we probably do this all the time, we might have a benefit on people's performances. Now then, the third way in which we can actually measure our uh, athletes is the idea of a questionnaire. And I always struggle with the spelling of questionnaire, so let me just pause a moment while I get that right. I think that's right. So we have questionnaires. I'm going to spend the rest of today's video really talking about questionnaires and questionnaire types. But we use questionnaires or some kind of self-report questionnaire. So let me write in here, self-report, some kind of self-report questionnaire. I'm going to talk to you about a couple of examples. But there are they're sort of practicalities, these. they're easy to find online and to get hold of, and they're relatively cheap to distribute, and they're relatively easy to use. But of course, they might not be absolutely ideal because they might not be the answer, and they might not be a true reflection. So they may... Just bear in with me a second. Uh, my computer's slowing down. They may not be a true reflection of what the performer is actually feeling. There is this tendency for athletes or for people to answer surveys in the way they sort of think they, they should. And we call this concept demand characteristics. Okay, The idea that we give a kind of socially desirable answer rather than a real answer. Thank you.